Welcome back to Wuhan, China, host of the 2017 World's Group Stage. The next two teams loading onto the rift are Gigabyte Marines and Immortals, who are tied at one and one going into this game. With picks and bans just moments away, let's go ahead and take a look at the teams themselves, starting on the blue side with the Gigabyte Marines. It's Archie in the top lane, Levi in the jungle, Optimus mid, No Way on AD carry, Nevin on support, and Coach Tinnikoon. Their opponents are Immortals on the right side for this game. It will be Flame in the top lane. The jungler Rick Smithy, mid lane and Probelta, AD carry Cody Sun, support Ole and their coach Song. Now Immortals picked up their first world's win against mm -hmm. Fnatic after a solid performance specifically by Poe Belter in the mid lane. Yeah, and Poe Belter came up huge on the Talia in that game because the bottom lane fell very far behind and he had to kind of bridge them all the way to the late game so the Kog'Maw could actually get to a point where one mistake from Reckless could end up winning the game. So it's going to be a really big performance from Poe Belter if he keeps that up. And expectations coming into the tournament were that Poe Belter he's kind of an average mid laner. He wasn't that superstar, he wasn't that standout, but I feel like we're seeing a lot of that at this tournament. That's uh, individuals seem to be getting that world's buff and they seem to be performing much higher than expected. It's always a lot of fun to see people step up like that, but if we look at their opponents, it seems like the Gigabyte Marines got figured out in their loss against Longju. Yeah, and the question will be, do they just have a bunch of variations of how to lane swap, or do they still have other creative things? And also, how necessary is that? Because no one is beating Longju with standard. No one is beating Longju with Gigabyte Marine strategies either. No. So, right, no I, one's I'm throwing Longju. that game away right now. And I know that it worked against Fnatic, and I can't wait to see what they have against Immortals. I think that they are a very creative team. They always have new and interesting things to bring out. But I think at this point, the, the strangest thing they could do is play standard. And Immortals right. probably not expecting that, right? We never expect the Gigabyte Marines to just go into a standard meta game of League of Legends and try to win it the old-fashioned way. We want to see innovation from these guys. We want to see some sort of new way, new, some new perspective of looking at everything. And let's see what we get out of this draft as Jace and Jarvan banned away by the Gigabyte Marines. Immortals taking Galio out. And I think Galio should be permanently banned against Gigabyte Marines. It's such an enabler for so much stuff as far as map play and just late game insurance for one super fed guy that they somehow managed to get a bunch of experience. Smart ban by Immortals. Sejuani going to be the third and final ban by the Gigabyte Marines as Callista is banned out by Immortals. She's just not allowed to see the light of day these days. I don't think Zion that's going to happen at all. Yeah, Zion and Rakan, they're both available as well. Gigabyte Marines, you would expect them to put some kind of high value on uh, Rakan specifically, except, uh, especially if Zaya is available too. It means you can pair it up with something like the Tristana and you still have an all in bot lane. The Scion ban. There was a I smirk on Poe Belter's face there. So I had to look in a different angle because I never see Scion banned and oftentimes I didn't know what champion that well, was oftentimes either. the flash arts are flipped in ban phase so they're looking away instead of looking forward so I believe that's what happened with Scion that's why I didn't recognize it what? <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a ban that's right there. That's some scouting right there. Maybe some of the Gigabyte Marine scrim partners have been talking or they saw something in solo queue. That's the only explanation I have. I mean I watched I'm a Cutie Pie stream the other day. He was playing full AD Psy on top. You know what? Maybe that's it. Maybe, Maybe that's it. it. What's the weirdest thing what we've seen Cutie in Cutie Pie Yeah, that's the Gigabyte Marines manual right there. But let's see exactly how they really decide to go through this. They grab Lulu first and foremost. And that's not anything rocking the boat, boys. This is pretty much one of the most standard picks you could go for. More standard coming out from Immortals as they pick up the Gragas and the Zaya. But now you have the Zaya Rakan for Immortals. I mean... Ole has always been praised during the regular season as being the big playmaker for the team, this guy that's risen to the top of NA support. And when you give him a champion like Rakan and you pair it up with a Zaya, that's kind of terrifying if you're on the if you're going up against this immortal squad. Gigabyte Marines picking themselves up the Kog'Maw. So gonna have that late game hyper carry potential as well as grabbing the Cho'Gath, another void monster, but a very different one. Yeah, so far. No surprises. The only surprise would be if the Cho'Gath moves into the jungle since almost everyone plays in top lane nowadays. Uh, but if they have anything different, it's in there. And the fact that they're giving over Zyra Khan again uh, is a little bit shocking. Janna's obviously up as well, but Zyra Khan are often disrupted for a reason. Yeah, those two are very, very strong together. And we did actually see Levi play the Cho'Gath in the jungle in their game versus Longju but it just didn't work out very well. Stylistically, it feels like a mismatch for him as a player. We see him always succeed on these big playmakers and carries and not these giant lumbery monsters that try to stomp around and build up their HP. But now that we're into the second part of the bands, I'm curious to see if Immortals has any more of that inside knowledge. Lucian band away, Talia band away. For the time being, everything looks 
fairly standard. Yep, nice respect being shown from the Gigabyte Marines towards Pobelta. We were only just talking about how he did have that great performance against Fnatic. And Immortals, they're going to stick with some standard bands of their own. Cassidy being directed towards Optimus. Definitely a big comfort pick for him in the middle lane. One more for Gigabyte Marines to go along with that Talia. They know that Immortals are going to be picking strictly solo laners, so that's where those bands will be aimed. How do they go about doing it? What's up the Marines sleeve this time around? Oh, I, guys. I don't think we're going to see another more. After the 0-7-0 and zero performance, I'm, I'm doubting it a little bit, guys, but Nar is the pick at the end of the day. So a bit of focus towards the top lane as well. Flame, he's had a, a pretty impressive Worlds group stage himself so far. Banning away one of the side lane pressure carries in the form of Nar, and allowing Mortals to pick themselves up a pretty staple mid lane. We saw it from Bjorksner during the day. Pobalt's are now going to have his shot at bringing out the champ. I mean, Immortals is picking a composition that is right in their wheelhouse stylistically. I'm going to stop talking about that for a moment, though, because these last two picks is whether or not we see something a little bit different from Marines. Come on, please, Marines. Do it, do it, do it. Levi, I remember that game where he got like 350 CS in a single game. Yep, As there we're we go. Do Kane it. locked in. Now, will they just do boring old Red Kane, or will they be adventurous and play no, Blue they Kane? should do the, the Red Kane, okay? <laughs> I feel like the Red Kane makes the, the most amount of sense. Uh, we can talk a lot more about it once we get into game, but Gigabyte Marines, they're going to defy expectations. Flowers, they're picking stand. All right, let's see how it works with Rise locked in as their final pick. Yeah, and I do feel like uh, people are a little overly grandiose with what they're expecting from the Gigabyte Marines to pull out. It's the first cane of group stage. That is still That's something fun. new. That's fun. Right? So, uh, yes, their picks look like things you've seen before. It's because a lot of picks are in pro. There's only so many champions they can pull in that you haven't seen before. So another non-meta jungler is what I'm going to call it for Levi. Immortals locking in Shen as their top laner and final pick of this draft. I also want to point out the Gigabyte Marines are running Heal Ignite, those Silsol Summoner spells for oh, yeah. people who played back in Season 1. In North America. In North America, <laughs> yes. It's a very specific reference, but I'm sure there's at least two people in the audience who get it. But those Summoner spells, we saw them work in the victory against Fnatic. Maybe they'll work again here. But it's against the Zyra Khan flowers. Like, this, hey, this bottom lane can kill you at level 1, level 2, <laughs> level 3, level 4. Like, how can you not Thaddeus, run Flash against that? Let me pitch you on this. Go, hit me. All right, let's see what he's got. Did Mako have Flash against Wolf's Rakan when he lost that team fight? Yes. You can't flash Rakan, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the heal's gonna help you when you're in there. <laughs> That's the logic. Why? That's the sell. You can't. Uh, you can't be punished for not flashing if you don't have flash in the first Stand place. Stand there, there and fight. <laughs> Somebody's going back to the spawn platform, and you hope it's not going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's the Gigabyte Marines versus Immortals. They picked what looks like a fairly standard comp. But will they stick to the standard style? We saw the Lulu uh, with the no flash be swapped up to the top side. Kane going to be very heavily focused on getting counter jungling in, invading in the enemy side of the map. But you need strong laners to do it. And when you have Cho'Gath and you have Ryze, you don't typically consider them to be the strongest laners during the early game. Let's see how it breaks out today. Remember, Gigabyte Marines, such gigantic differences in their two performances so far. They'd really like to grab this win against Immortals with both teams coming into this one at one and one. It means somebody walks away with a positive record going into week two and somebody doesn't. Yeah, and even though uh, almost no one gives over Zaya and Rakan and Gigabyte Marines did do that to Longju as well as in this game, uh, Ole hasn't played it in the summer split, so it's definitely something that he's needed to practice in order to pull out here. And look at the stats on your screens right now. The highest and second highest champion kills per minute in group stage teams. These two right now, it's going to be a bloodbath by all measures. Exactly. Teams that are used to playing fast, are those naturally suited to go up against the Gigabyte Marines? Or if you're not fast enough, does it actually just expose you to more risk? That's one of the things we're going to be able to find out in this game. It's like juggling balls when casting Gigabyte Marines. Sometimes they go perfectly, sometimes they kind of go all over the place. You never really know what you're going to get. As Gigabyte Marines, they're looking to set a bit of an invade up right now. Well, listen, they got scouted out last time they did it, but now they see Ole. There we go. Ole doesn't find his knockup. Instead, he's going to be killed. First blood, Gigabyte Marines. Paul Belter flashes over the wall. Cody flashes over the wall. That went awful for Immortal. Yeah, and I have to wonder what Ole was really thinking. Like, Marines knew he was there. They had wards all 
all throughout their own jungle. And Ole didn't even have a numbers advantage. He just jumped into four people. Lulu doesn't have flash. The, Let's go. Listen to the crowd. G-A-M. They are in support of this team. They made a name for themselves. Taking down Fnatic. Yes, they got crushed by Longju. But now they've gotten themselves first blood. They're going for standard lanes. And starting off by taking four summoner spells away from Immortals is a fantastic way to kick this off. The ward saw them walking through. But then Ole just way ahead of the team with Shen not even close. An unconscionable invade right there by Ole, but it cost him first blood. Now Rise has. Now I want to see Levi make his way down to the bottom lane. No flashes on either champion. You don't have a huge amount of CC, but you got a lot of damage with Kane. This guy can run through wards, he can take creative paths, and I love seeing that Levi is already invading. I've heard from so many players that jungle Kane could only be played properly if he's stealing stuff away. Exactly, we have seen this pick in the LCS and in pro play, and it's er you need to make it worth early. You have to use your mobility to get the counter jungle again. Getting first blood and getting the early wards helps a ton with this, and Smithy walks right into it as well. He's gonna miss out on probably his whole jungle if he's able to smite this away. Levi has smite, Smithy does not. Levi doesn't It'll be a smite another. battle, but Levi is the uh, one to walk away with it. Super successful counter jungling coming out from the Gigabyte Marines jungler. This is the kind of champion we like to see this guy on too. Now healing up off of the Scuttle Crabs, we can continue getting in Smith's face. And we talked about the different evolutions just as we were getting into game, and you would expect Levi to go towards Ross. He wants to kill him. Or go towards Smithy for some damage, but instead, Smithy just sidesteps out of the way of it. That's one of the troubling parts about Kane right there. He's so mobile in the jungle. He's got so many ways to get in and out. And all the attention that Levi is drawing here is helping their bottom lane a lot. No way out CS and Cody Sun because they've been dancing between that jungle trying to back up X Smithy and they've lost on both fronts. I was curious as to why Levi wasn't using his W and it turns out that he didn't even max it. He just decided he didn't even to learn it. it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, he didn't even decide to pick that ability up. Decided to just put all his points in Q and E. Additional wave clear on the Kane. He just wants to steal away those camps and wants that additional wave clear. And already being level four, He's just going to make Xmithy's life as difficult as possible in the other game. Yeah, Levi is all about first. First person to play Kane here in the group stage. Fastest first blood of the group stage. Fastest to level six we've ever seen when he played Nocturne. This guy always is the innovator, trying to get one step ahead of the enemy jungler because he puts them out of their comfort zone. Whereas he's been practicing the stuff, he's right in his zone. There comes your initiation from Immortals onto the bottom lane of Gigabyte Marines. That's that lack of flash on Lulu that might end up being problematic later. Nevin taken very low here, gonna eat some of those biscuit, potion, whatever they are, heal himself back up, as he in no way is still okay for now. Like the decision making from No Way though, go straight onto the AD carry rather than onto the support. Realize that the damage threat is gonna be Cody's son and just prevent him from getting involved. But now we have to talk a little bit about Immortals, because they are the ones in the deficit, they are the ones that have been pushed back. But in terms of the laning phase, things still going reasonably well up in the top side for Flame. He's holding his own well up against Archie. You can see Pobalt are not that big of a deficit. And the AD carries, they're still staying relatively even. The only one that's really struggling is Ix Smithy in the jungle. Yeah, and I think what gets lost a lot of time when everyone is throwing around cheese and what Gigabyte Marine's gonna do is at the end of the day, when they beat Fnatic, it was because they had a fed Trist Lulu. Yep. Right. It they, was almost a pentakill. They used these creative strategies to get through the mid game, but they still knew how to play. So in this game, they invaded more aggressively than a lot of other teams would. Potentially, they put Immortals in a different mindset about what they were going to do, and they gave Levi an early lead in the jungle. And now, if they scale a late game with Ryze, Cog, Lulu, Cho, they'll be just fine. It doesn't feel like cheese. Cheese would be if Levi gets level two and then sits in a bush waiting for Smithy for two straight minutes and just tries to bank his entire game on getting a kill. Exactly. Everyone has their own definition of what cheese is, and they often use it as an insult. Like, oh, you need to cheese because you can't beat us playing exactly the way we want to play you. Yeah. Like, that's, that's BS right there, <laughs> because ultimately, you're all playing the same game with the same tools. So if Gigabyte Marines use a different strategy, go for it. Well, now the strategy is gank bot lane, especially onto the guy with no flash. That is the punishment for those unorthodox summoner spells. Well, 
this is kind of what we were talking about. Unfortunately for the Gigabyte Marines, they didn't move down to the bottom lane. They didn't try and punish the flashless AD carry and support. And that means that it allowed time for Xmithy to make his way down. There was no vision from Gigabyte Marines. And INT, they make their way onto the board. Yeah, that was a good gank, and it's neutralized this early game, especially if they can get ahead of no way. They're not going to get to that late game Kog'Maw Lulu, and they need to be able to play this lane in a safe way. Doesn't even use heal here, and Tech, if he would have had that incredibly small window to flash away had he had it, but that was a pretty good gank by Immortals regardless. Immortals getting themselves on the board, but the gold lead still favors Gigabyte Marines ever so slightly. First Drake is Ocean, so he might not be the most desirable objective to start the game out with. You can see that gold lead is 600. It's the lead. It's also the difference between the junglers. Levi doing a lot of work so far. He has hit level 6 on the Kane. Kane's ultimate isn't the greatest in base form, though. It's cool, though. It's cool. It, it does a lot of damage. You can have a lot of cool out plays with it. Pretty effective against Syndra, especially, as well. So we'll see how that plays into account later on. But the other big thing to note is Flame has now hit level 6. Remember, no flash in the bottom lane. If you get a good push off with Cody Sun and Ole, they can look to try and make that dive down bot. Gigabyte Marines have answered with a bit of vision in the river. But Levi, he's just trying to continue with the jungle aggression into Immortals half the map. Yeah, and this is the point of the game where he really wants to work up towards that transformation. He does have his ultimate, which is nice, but he's not reaching that point of true power until he can get his first transform. And it's one of the reasons why you have to be so active on this champion. So much of your power is gated into the evolution that you need to be getting those orbs. You need to be getting that damage. You will find some against Smithy here. Now, though, the collapse coming in from Immortals. The stun lands onto Levi, but calling him yeah. in any sort of danger there would have been a lie. Gigabyte Marines have to respect the channel at this point. Yes, they're playing with the lead that they have on Levi, but it doesn't mean that this is just a free or free for all. Optimus Whoa. tries to flash to get the root now, Whoa. going into the Realm Warp. That was. Rooting kind of over the wall, spamming your spells as the Realm Warp's gonna take him. Hey, it burned the flash in the Shen Ultimate, but it cost his own flash and ultimate, so it's a wash. Oh, that, was, that was a bit of a messy one. I don't know about that outcome specifically. Levi will find Flame here walking into the brush, dashing forward, just harassing him a little bit, making his life harder as he walks back to his own lane. Making it even harder now, getting those orbs. Levi there just you go. being a pest. One orb. There's no counts left for him to steal. Xmithy has already made his way back towards the bottom lane, but this time Gigabyte Marines are aware of his ability to set up a gank. Ole level six as well. Look at the level difference between the bottom lane. No Shen ulti or TP, but with these three members, these should be strong enough to be able to set up a die. So under level. This. Nevin is level four. His health bar just looks so tiny. But only the base health to work with. <laughs> See, guys, in solo queue, this, this sometimes is a risky strat. You need to run flash on your support, especially against a champion like Rakan. Levi now being brought up into the mix to clear these waves away. Try to save turret first blood. No way continuing to clear those out. And Levi has done his job. Back to farming. So as much, Vedius, bit of a tangent, as much as I feel like the flash could have helped him escape that one gank, sure. I think it's more no way Nevin just not being as good at laning as Cody Sun or Ole, or the Great fact ballad. that Zyra Rakan bullies every Kog'Maw Lulu lane. So Credit to Ole and Cody Sun for bullying them in here and also being able to land an all in through a barrier heal lane. So, uh, good on them. And I'm going to hold personally off on the flame of the bar of the uh, Healing Knight players. I mean, Cody Sun and Ole, this was a bottom lane that people w weren't honestly given a lot of credit or respect to. At the beginning of the season, we're tossing all the way back to Spring Split here. But then throughout summer, Immortals, as they went from a seventh place team to a team that went to the finals of the North American LCS Summer Split. A big reason for that was Cody and Ole's play, a lot of which came out in lane. Absolutely, and they're gonna be able to break this first turret. Feels like no problem. Levi's still trying to farm up to level eight, not helping that bottom lane whatsoever, as we see a lot of other teams doing when their bottom lane is in trouble. He's trying to delay that lane. Instead, they might go for play on somewhere else on the map. And look at the farm lead too. Cody Sun, 103, no way 70 at the moment the turret falls. The gold lead now almost 1,000 in the favor of Immortals after the level one mishap. Things have pretty much done nothing but sway their way. Now moving to grab that first trade. It's been harder and harder for Levi to really exert pressure into the enemy half of the jungle. He will now move top 
to be able to get this turret, which will equalize the turret score, but Immortals, they're still keeping up with the plays themselves. They've been able to take that first tower of the game, transition that very quickly into an ocean, and an Essence Reaver already completed for Cody Sir. Yeah, and I think Immortals has done a good job stabilizing this game after the failed invade level one. The fact that they won that lane so hard after losing Ole's Ignite, Flash, all that stuff, and then also after X Smithy did the invade that gave no way the 10 CS lead early, like that lane completely flipped thanks to the strength of their mid game laning. Gigabyte Marines have to find some way to make this early game go well for them. That's the way that we've seen so many of their wins come out. They innovate, they theorize, they find all these new ways to play, but now those ways to play are getting punished pretty hard. Wild growth from Nevin onto himself, but Stand United brings another Immortals player into the mix and more money into the pocket of Cody's son. I'll give you this one. Flash would have been pretty nice there. <laughs> but also just good utilization of the channel from Immortals. This is something that we were talking about earlier on where it's very easy to just make plays happen in the bottom lane because you have the Rakan who's great at engaging and you just have the immediate Shen follow-up. So even if Levi's there to help him out, it's just going to still be a three versus two in their favor and they're going to be able to get the successful team fight. Levi farming up his Krugs, but now being pressured by Ole and Cody has to walk back using Kane's ever so handy ability to do that. But Xmithy, even though he's two levels down on Levi, walking through the jungle, recognizing the power of his own laners to help him if he gets into that one versus one. And now that's exactly what they're doing. Oh, Levi they're trying to force this to fight. Get himself out of this one. Realm Warp coming in, but nobody even steps into it. Cody's son popping the ulti. Archie coming in from the flank, trying to grab somebody. But Immortals reinforcements have arrived. Smithy goes over the wall, Archie goes after him, flash for flash, rupture not quite gonna slow him down enough just yet. Cast to knock him away. Yeah, lots of disengage there for Immortals as Gigabyte Marines can't quite force hard enough. Archie really tried there, but ultimately just able to trade flash for flash for himself and the jungler, so you gotta question whose flash was more valuable there. Will diminish the initiation for X Smithy for the next few minutes. You can also see that Immortals were able to successfully get a lot of deep vision down into the Gigabyte Marines bottom half jungle. What they'll utilize that for is up to them, but it could be a potential roam or flank. As you can see, no way and never win the turret to play around becomes very easy to collapse upon down the 2v2. All right, boys, take a look at this though. The Gigabyte Marine gold differences during the group stage. It stays consistent there for a while, but then as it approaches 10 minutes, you can start to see the divergence. 20 minutes, it's very far apart, and those are the two games that they've had so far. Once it starts going one way, it doesn't stop. That's the lesson. Yeah, what's interesting in this game is it is different, right? The gold is even. We haven't had that insanely volatile lane swap dive forced by the Marines by lane swapping. I wonder actually if they planned on lane swapping, but then pivoted to playing standard once they got the first blood. There's always a possibility of that, but it's in this game, it doesn't necessarily seem like they have the same type of combination for the Power Farm 6. You never know, though. And I feel like Levi, the impact that he's been able to have on this cane has just been dwindling as the game progressed. Initially, we saw him suddenly up a lot of great invades. We saw him putting a lot of pressure down onto X Smithy, but now X Smithy's reaching this point where he has more team fight value. He has more utility on the Grag because he's going to be tankier later on into the game. It's going to be easier for Immortals to both start these fights and team fight in general. So Gigabyte Marines, you kind of need to see where they're going to go with this composition they've drafted because it's kind of a little bit all over the shop with a bit of early game, a bit of mid game, and a bit of late game everywhere from their car. Mm -hmm. Immortals now rotating that bottom lane mid. They've taken the bottom lane tier one. Tier two is a bit difficult to push on to 15 minutes into the game. So instead, they'll start putting the damage into the tier one mid lane. Cody's son, very strong right now. You missed the Essence Weaver before. You compare that to the Kog'Maw that's still juggling around pieces of against Ginsu's Rage Blade, which feel really bad to just buy on their own, by the way. Having a Blasting Wand sitting in your 80 carries inventory just doesn't do a lot yeah. for you. At an incredibly weak point in the game right now. That is okay, though, sometimes when you're camping mid lane. Uh, one of the harder turrets to dive as long as they can continue to clear that wave. Uh, Rise also transitions into side lane fairly well, especially with the Abyssal Mask. That's what Gigabyte Marines is trying to do. Surprisingly, all very standard stuff. The Ruby Crystal completed for Levi in his inventory now almost guarantees to me that he's going to be going Red Cane instead of Blue Cane just because of the fact that I'm Blue I'm sorry Cane to break your heart, Cloud. Blue Cane builds nothing but long swords and items that come from long swords, so probably not the Health Crystal today. Levi showing right there why you probably want to have a little bit of tankiness in this game. The damage mm -hmm. from Pobelter Syndra will be 
very threatening as we go on. He's got the Morello Namicon done now as well, so healing's gonna be that much more difficult to get it to stick onto him as the Immortals push continues. It looks like Gigabyte Marines not in a spot to stop it. Impressed with how Immortals are just keeping this bot main push as they move between bot and mid. They make sure that someone from Gigabyte Marines is always there to answer the wave. That means Immortals have the numbers advantage and it makes taking that mid tower down that much easier. They've now finally gotten themselves the gold lead and the game is now much more in, a, in an easier state for a team like Immortals to be able to read and plan the next one. Yeah, exactly. So. Any type of early game shenanigans of neutralizing is that 1,000 gold lead for Immortals where they have a lot of CC and initiation. Looking at the way the Marines need to try and make it to late game, they don't have that much CC or initiation, but they need to find a way to keep the farm going up onto No Way's Kog'Maw. He needs to hit those items, and then I think they actually have a chance of having pretty decent mid-game teamfights. Still a close game, 1,000 gold separating the sides. Levi moving towards the Rift Herald with the help of Nevin, who's still only a level seven Lulu. Pretty far behind the curve here in this game. Ole now cresting level nine. Rift Herald gonna be given up on there. Gigabyte Marine's not able to grab that one just yet. And Levi really needs to transform before he can force right now. Uh, the level 10 at the moment is really difficult for him to get by. Picked up. Again now by Immortals. Shouldn't be any sort of contest between themselves and Gigabyte Marines. As they grab that one for free, that's two oceans in their pocket. As this game goes on, that extra regeneration may prove very helpful if they like to skirmish with Gigabyte Marines back out immediately afterwards. They'll be topped off again. They can go right back in there. And it just feels like that Immortals are the ones now dictating the pace of the game. Thanks to Cody, Sun, and Ole, the advantages they built themselves up in the bottom lane, they're the main carries that are being moved around the map and trying to pressure Gigabyte Marines into making a bad decision that they can then look to capture. Honestly, I feel a little bit... What's the word I'm feel? looking for? I'd... A little bit lied to by the stats this game because we came into this thinking these two teams have the highest amount of champion kills per minute so far. This should be a bloodbath, but now maybe they're looking to rectify that lie. Archie getting himself caught out, beat down, giving another kill over to Cody's son. He's super dead. I mean, Flowers, there was one combined kill per minute for the Marines, about 0.8 for Immortals, I believe, average yeah. 0.9. Currently, we have uh, four in 20, so I think you're yeah. fine to <laughs> think that it to a bit. Uh, but games do accelerate in kills as they extend forward, so there's still a chance. All right, Especially with the Mortals having all these Ocean Drakes, they're gonna keep staying healthy. Let's see how the chance looks here for Gigabyte. Never mind, doesn't look good. Flame gets himself away, Spirit's Refuge keeps him safe. Quick Not too that, worried Flowers. about that one. Yep, we're able to do that quick math to see they don't have enough damage to do 2,000 to his health instantly. Well, Gigabyte Marines will be able to get their second turret of the game, but Immortals already on track to get themselves their third. Immortals just seem to be faster on the play. They were able to find that successful pick onto Archie, and it's just starting to feel harder and harder for Gigabyte Marines just to find some kind of answer to this constant bot lane pressure from Immortals. And talking about being faster on the play, you're the one who said it at the beginning, I believe, Jat, where you were talking about if you're fast and you play against fast, is it good because you know what to expect or are you just going to get it outclassed in that respect? Right now, Gigabyte Marines is the one who's saying, oh, well, I guess maybe we're not fast enough. Yeah, or do both teams just sit back and think, this team is going to try something funny, let me watch them. And then they just stare at each other for 19 and a half minutes. But then you kill the enemy. Yeah, right here, just like this. This is where they found the kill. Archie stuck around too long trying to clear the ward out. Used his flash, bit of a waste, arguably, but on the bright side, he gets the Shandalty out. Uh, but he does end up losing the Rift Herald and a top lane tower, which results in a very swift advantage going in favor of Immortals. Now the Baron has four. Now it's only 20 minutes. Right. So I don't think they're going to rush it down. We I saw it last game at 22. We did, we did, but that was because an entire team went down to the Infernal Drain. So there was a big window. Uh, for that to happen. Whereas Immortals, they're just setting up vision and making it a pressure point. They're forcing Gigabyte Marines into this situation where they go, oh, are they doing it? Are they not? Maybe we have to check. And that's where someone like Ole will find his pick, find the kill, and then maybe they can translate that into a battle. Yeah, but the game is still at a point, even with the two Ocean Drakes, that one fight could end up swinging it uh, in a very big way. One thing that Gigabyte Marines talked about uh, when comparing their roster from MSI to now, is the bottom lane being switched out. I mean, No Way is the new addition to this team, and they rave about how good he is building hyper-carry compositions around him and him being a true carry for the team, so it's still on him to perform in a big way as this team approaches late. 
as this game goes further and further, we're now 21 minutes in. Immortals taking the tier two turn away from the Gigabyte Marines. Look at the man on the flank, Levi. In case you haven't noticed, he's still base Kane. 21 yeah. minutes into the game on a champion that normally wants to evolve around 15 or before. He's not in a spot where he can take those early advantages yeah. and do anything with it. Hasn't been enough action for him to be able to get involved and get that transformation. Goes back to base once again. Still not even having his Black Cleaver. And five ah, minutes, there we go. 21 minutes and 36 seconds. Scythe through the heart, gets impaled. Now he's got some power. This is why you want to be playing the cane as an invade style jungler, but to do that, you need pressure in lanes. After Archie got a few levels, yes, he had the push, and Optimals went, uh, Optimus rather, went pretty even against Pobelter, but the bottom lane was struggling so much that Levi didn't really have that freedom to just sit in Xmithy's jungle, keep harassing Xmithy out of the jungle, and he just wasn't finding those opportunities to get those things. Well, now that they've got the cane involved, at least they've got him to a point where he can be used for in these fights. The knock-up on his W, one of the most useful parts of that evolution. But Immortals is just putting so much pressure on right now, they're taking another Tier 2 turret, 22 minutes in. Just tower after tower after tower for Immortals. They have great vision set up. They realize that Gigabyte Marines are constantly answering the minion waves. They get pushed underneath their tower. They're in a bad position, so they can't answer. And that gives IMT a very swift objective. Yeah, and I think Immortals is playing this one really smart. Uh, they're getting enough wards down. They're sieging in a safe way. We haven't actually seen Ole go for many plays. If anything, he's followed up X Smithy when he does go for a body slam flash, but they haven't needed to because as long as his goal lead continues to extend and uh, as long as Cody Sun stays so far ahead of the curve of Noe's items, they're going to be absolutely fine. 40 seconds till that next Drake spawns. That'll likely go over to Immortals if they continue to control the game at the pace they're doing right now. Gigabyte Marines, this team feels totally different this game. Mm -hmm. Before, they were always looking for options. It was never a slow bleed from Gigabyte Marines. It was, we're gonna just end this game faster. We're gonna die trying. They're always trying to make a move, but today it's just the opposite. On the bright side, it's better than their long game. Yeah. They don't have a 0-7 Mordecai this. So you gotta look at the bright sides. They still have the potential for a card more. You know, as Cass has always talked about, the late game. You know, so far, Immortals are doing a great job of slowly pressing their advantage further and further into the base of Gigabyte Marines. But if they slow down at any point and no way is able to get that two or three out of Hogmore state, then maybe, maybe we can see this shining, this rising eight carry for the Gigabyte Marines have more of an impact. But it's hard to believe when Cody Sun has like a 2.2k gold advantage over his 80k account. Yeah, Cody Sun working on big item number three now and then. It's at the edge, feathers fly, and he immediately cuts down the enemy support. Flair X Smith, he grabbed the kill onto No Way now as well. Levi and Optimus having to flash themselves out to stay alive. I don't know if you can say the same thing for Archie here. Does flash away, does stay ticking for now as they continue the chase. Immortals want more blood. Flame looking to solo down Archie as the rest of the team works together, getting rid of Optimus. Two left alive on the side of the Gigabyte Marines. And now Archie, he's number four. He's out of there. And Immortals go one for four. They clean house in that fight the Gigabyte Marines tried to start. And for Lulu, if you're going to bring Heal Ignite, at least use the heal when you're getting bursted down. He dies before using anything in that fight. Cody Sun, as well, able to avoid that engage. Zai is a great pick for him as well. I feel like there are instances, even in the Longju game, as Levi tries to take down Flame, we're gonna follow this. Flame trying to fight this one out. Now that he's got Nevin here, he's got no way. Levi takes him out, but they traded away for Baron, which is not really what you want to be trading those single kills for. I think Immortals can be pretty happy with how that all played out. Gigabyte Marines are going to try and get some consolation prize, but this is where we see Gigabyte Marines trying to get a flank off. They use the Rise ulti, they're up. Their target is Cody's son, but immediately he dies, he flashes away, he gets out of the fray, he has the Shen ulti too, and the rest of Gigabyte Marines are just getting melted by the front line of IMT. Gigabyte Marines want to take this Ocean Drake down for themselves. Nice pick on the Pobelter. They grab themselves the Drake as well. This could be exactly what the team needs. It's Smithy to fall next. Big misplay yeah. there from Immortals. They think they can just walk up to the Dragon. They think they can contest. But then Archie gets the Nom Nom down. He forces the kill down onto X Smithy and Pobelter. And that results in an ocean, and now pressure going in favor of the Gigabyte Marine. Yeah, you're still against a Cho'Gath at the end of the day, so a rather bold attempt to take that third ocean. Just kind of cycling death timers. They got to make sure they recover enough so they can actually get the 5v5 where they've shown they have an advantage. Levi tried to go through the wall there, see if he could find anybody to throw up into the air with the scythe, but 
Unluckily for him, Cody Sun and Ole stick together constantly this game. Ole knows he needs to be protecting Cody, knows how strong Cody is, and he's perfectly fine just hanging around him, attached at the hip, as we so often say about these Ardent Sensor supports. Oh my goodness, this fight at the Drake Pit, Cole Belter getting a little bit too greedy when he moves forward like this against a bunch of Gigapipe Marines. Num, 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 num. And then they still get the Drake at the end of the day with the smite. So very good play by Gigapipe Marines. I think that they just didn't have the wards there, so he uh, he didn't even see the teleport until Ole had come around. Then the moment he realizes, uh-oh, I'm in danger, he gets silenced, he gets knocked up, and uh, unfortunately, you can't use any abilities when you are silenced. A little bit inconvenient as the Immortals squad pushes up into enemy territory now again. Looking to contest the jungle of Gigabyte Marines. Levi 2-0 and 3 on this Kane, doing the best of anyone on his team. 100% kill participation, BF sword and inventory, likely a GA to make him that much harder to kill when he does run into these fights. Yeah, he's going to try and carry, but I... Knowing Kane does not actually scale amazingly into the very late game. He feels great to play, but a lot of times, uh, he has that fall off, and Poe Belter and Cody Sun, more so Cody Sun, are absolutely online right now. Just gonna try and go back to the types of plays that were getting the lead. They did die after Drake, but they still have 50 seconds of Baron. I'm gonna try and chip down these turrets. Still have a 6,000 gold lead, too, when they get into these fights in neutral territory. Marines have to play it so well to do well. Just wanna highlight that uh, Levi, 200 farm on the cane. Don't know how he always does this, but he's always able to just channel farm into himself while not taking anything away from his teammates. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though, as Immortal's already sieging onto the base. Yeah, There's still not. 30 seconds left to Baron, and Shen Ultimate can threaten if Gigabyte Marines try and engage. Immortal's knocking down the turret. Now can they take the inhibitor itself? Nothing left to defend. It means it's a fair fight and open ground. Shen still pushing topside, can stand united at any time. Archie trying to silence these guys up. He's quite a lot of damage into that 4,000 health pool. He's got a lot of health, but not a lot of resistances right now, so he's not nearly as tanky as he seems. Cody oh. Sun eats a lot of meat right healed. now, but he gets back and healed immediately as Levi, nearly finding himself first and down, now runs away, but Poe Belter still able to pop the GA. Now they can find even more. Nevin's knocked up. Levi respawns, gets a four-man's blade reach, but I don't think it's going to be enough to save the end. It's not enough. Immortals is sticking together so well and just focus firing down the right targets. They get Nivan again and the inhibitor. Immortals walk away victorious once more. Cody Sun has really been the big carry of Immortals this game. He had a bit of a rough start, losing his support to First Blood, but the pressure did not continue from the Gigabyte Marines. X Smithy decided to make his way down, but they punished the flashless Lulu. They utilize the Zaya Rakan. Now it's a 403 Zaya level 15 that is just ripping through the lineup with Gigabyte Marines. And Levi goes over the wall trying to steal away some chickens. He gets them, but that's about it. You asked how he has 226 CS? A lot of enemy raptor camps. Uh, over and over again. It's what, 6 CS every time you steal one? That's a wave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He steals a lot of caps. To be fair, Levi had that game where he was like 350 CS within like a 35 minute game, which is really nice. But now we can look back at how this inhibitor fight played out. Good knock up there from Levi, but then Pro Belter with the good stun in response, knocking him back, delaying the engage. And Immortals, they're just buying time. Eventually, they're forced to use the Shen ulti. And then here, they get the great oh. knock up onto the Lulu. There's nothing Nevin can do. Levi doing his best to keep the team alive, but unfortunately for the Gigabytes, it just wasn't enough. Gigabyte Marines, the situation gets bleaker and bleaker as time wears on. The slower paced game has just been a slow bleed almost for the entirety of it. That one mishap at the Drake, really the biggest mistake that we saw for the mortals. And now they move up again, looking to make plays onto Optimus or the tier three, whichever comes first. One feather from Cody takes it out, but he's still gonna be maybe in trouble. Oh. Never mind, grab the kill onto Levi for Poe Belter. The mortals continues their push with Demption to keep him healthy. Sit back and now Redemption one more time. Get the second inhibitor. Rinse and repeat with inhibitor three. Or just wait a minute until you can get the Baron and go all the way for the Nexus Immortals. Has played with so much control. Except for two blips, which was the level one invade and the and the Ocean Drake, the Gigabyte Marines ended up stealing away. But aside from that, it has just been a great display from Immortals. I mean, we so often see teams hit the wall of these inhibitor turrets and say, no, wait for Baron. We'll push then. That's when we're going to make our move. 
Immortals just says no. They just walk straight in, take whatever they want, and now they've got one lane left to do it in. Rupture finds its way only onto X Smithy. RG can't even walk close to this Zaya right now. Cody just outputs so much damage. And you've got to think about what this means to the group as well. Immortals getting that two and one scoreline is going to solidify them in that second place spot. Having that kind of a lead is so advantageous moving into next week. And now we can just look back at how they were able to get that very quick kill on the week. Yeah, just tries to go in, doesn't have the GA this time. Everyone uses the spells, he's gone, right? They're not yep. able to initiate cleanly for together. In no way is so scared of all the Syndra and Zaya CC that he's not able to get close. They might try and rush this Baron on spawn, though. Another the only Drake. other chance they have. Another Drake did go the way of Immortals. They picked up the mountain on their way out of the Gigabyte Marine's base. Baron spawning right now. Gigabyte Marines only has Levi nearby, so no spawn chance for them. Immortals already getting into position. Yeah, no Baron rush to be. No way was just in the mid lane. Uh, most likely not worth trying to contest this Baron, but there are very few options left because if they do give up the Baron, their base is probably dead, but they're too slow on the Oof. play anyway. So Immortals. much damage on the side of Immortals. Yeah, and Immortals is getting set for the final push. I want to take this small moment before they push in to clarify my thoughts on Helic Knight because I think it can work in lane for those strengths, but I do not think it is good overall before you take it into every game in solo queue, specifically in pro play as well, when they are more willing to punish missed positions. It means there is no way out ever of a Gragas Body Slam, a Gragas Alt, or a Rakan Engage, and I think Immortals has done a very good job punishing that this game. I also think it's always just a risk to run it into a Zyra Rakan lane, which oh, yeah. in general, you should never look to give away. But now his Immortals, they're looking for the final push, they're looking for the game. Redemption called down, silence down on the flame, but he's just so tanky. Immortals have the raw stats to force this issue right now. Optimus and the rest of the Gigabyte Marines will hold the turret for this push, but the next minion wave will likely be it. There's quite a lot of wave kill on the side of Gigabyte Marines, so I feel like Immortals need to send Flame down bot, get that minion wave pushed into Gigabyte Marines' base to just split up the Gigabyte Marines so that they now have the Baron, they have the extra minions, but that tower's pretty low, they might just try and force it. Here we go, Force comes out, Levi goes in, looking to find the first, but he got Cody 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 Cody. done! This could be the fight. Immortals now without their big carry. Archie taken low. Levi the one who's wild broke. Flame back it away. Redemption to keep them healthy. Gigabyte has to think how hard they want to chase this. Immortals is full HP. What a beautiful play from the Gigabyte Marines. Knock up from Levi into insta-kill from Archie. Fantastic coordination that'll delay it for a little bit longer, but Immortals, I don't think they're dissuade just yet. Double Whoa. Mountain Drake, they are gonna heal up, and Gigabyte Marines use a lot. They're trying to just leverage these super minions to help them get the three inhibitor cycle. Haunting on the Levi, the burst comes through from Poe Belter, but there's oh, your Realm War putting Archie in the back line, seeing what he can find. Rupture not making its way onto anyone just yet, but the silence and the polymorph will hold him there for a moment longer. Gigabyte Marines just doesn't have the damage to get these kills. Yeah, they don't have the stickiness in their engagement. They don't have that hard CC from a Syndra stun or a Khan engage. Everyone is just kind of slowly walking towards them. There we and go. here we go, there's, there's the, the replay. replay. <laughs> so great knock up there from Levi, and again, the immediate follow-up from Archie is fantastic. The one thing we can say about Gigabyte Marines is just they're so quick to collapse on a call. They find the pick onto Cody's son. They're able to buy a little bit more time, but their base is still in shambles. They're gonna need to find so many more of these before IMT are at a real risk of a big comeback from the Marines. Now, Cody's son says, eh, I might go with the Guardian Angel, because they yep. have a lot of front-loaded bursts, but then not so much sticking power after the fight. So in this case, I actually like Guardian Angel on 80 carries, when most times I like stuff like Mercurial Scimitar, but not gonna be able to get that uh, as well. Immortals has two inhibitors to still take down. They have one inhibitor already down on the side of their opponents. Find here, stun from Poe Belter, working its way towards that minion line, clearing those out. Big Smithy on the front line. Flame here with the rest of the team, not even bothering to split push, doesn't need to. Mid lane inhibitor falls. Cody Sun grabbing the credit on that one as the top lane inhibitor respawns. So essentially the same situation, just a little bit different. Bottom lane now the target. The poke coming out from Gigabyte Marine just doesn't do anything. Gone. Goes through onto RG. Spirit Threat keeps it down to prevent any sort of a counterattack. Blade's reach only gonna find those tanks yet again. 
Flame now backing himself away as Immortals gets two. Uh, the Baron has just ran out for Immortals. Surprised that they still had it because uh, I thought that it may have run out much earlier, but the Bite Marines did a good job of stalling things out. Now Levi could be in a bit of danger. But instead, Immortals, their eyes are on that third and final inhibitor. It's a pretty big minion wave in the bottom lane. So they may want to go and close that out. Or Immortals, they may just want to try and end the game now. Yeah, just push for the third inhib. Even without Baron, the super minions and the other two waves are going to create a force response by the Bite Marines. And we also know they just don't have the greatest initiation, so Immortals could crack a lot of this base uh, even without the Baron. Let's see what they can do now that they've got their opponents stuck in their base. There's almost no way to leave when you've got three inhibitors down. Even if you win five for zero team fight, it's difficult to make a lot happen with it oftentimes just because you'll find your Nexus turrets getting beat on by four different super minions. And now that all three inhibitors are down, there's two coming from each lane every single wave. It's a full-time job to even contain this. And that's why they haven't sent anyone back to the bottom lane because those super minions have now hit the big minion wave that was stacking up for the Marines. They've got a minion wave pushing up top. Immortals also have another minion wave pushing up top. And it's just the waiting game for Immortals at this point. Stun goes through from Pobelter, finds its way onto two. Levi, two-thirds HP. He does have the ability to heal himself up significantly in the fight using the ulti. But with the damage and burst that Immortals has, yeah. you've always got to pay attention to that. Exactly. And it's probably not going to cost Immortals this game, uh, but Cody's sons Mispositioning in the late game is becoming a big worry for mortals. It hurt them a huge amount against Longju. And here, he got killed at the mid inhibitor, and he took a large amount of poke as they were trying to finish the base, which forced them to pull back. Ocean Drake's healing him now. They have such a large lead, it probably won't matter. But there will come a time when their games are very close, and he has to position better. They move on to the Elder Drake. They want to make sure that the next push into the Immortals, or into the Gigabyte Marine space, excuse me, is the final one. They'll all back in unison. They'll shop for the final time, and they'll try to end this game. Gigabyte Marines, 10,000 gold down. Elder Drake on the enemy team. They've got to pull off one hell of a fight to stay in this one. While the Super Minions pour into their base. If it wasn't hard enough, it's got to be harder. Exactly. It's free farm, man. It's just tunneling into the base. You know, you can stack up everything you need. Bright side of losing three and him. Yeah, I mean, they would love to have No Way actually reach late game Kog'Maw because he is 5,000 gold behind oh Cody's son, who, by the way, has sold his boots. He's just got so much gold lying around that he keeps buying these things. It's actually Pobelter that's been dealing with a large chunk of this damage. Again, kind of the unsung hero of the Immortal squad. He has been super consistent on this Syndra. He does have two deaths. That is the unfortunate circumstance that you put in when largely playing against champions like a Cho'Gath, uh, but still been able to dish out the damage and assist his team in getting them to the stake of the round right now. Flame purposefully goes back to base just to make sure he's ready one last time. Picks up the stone plate. TP's back in. Immortals ready to siege the Nexus itself. Knock up from Levi only on doing Smithy. Doesn't really matter. He takes a swing out of the cask, looking for those initiations. Nexus turret number one almost down. Number two still okay, but with this amount of minions, neither yeah. one of them is going to last that long. It's just a matter of time unless Gigabyte Marines try an all out engage. There you go. Optimus tries to flash in, able to find the root, but not going to be finding much else. Cody's done with the damage. The taunt is locking Archie up, and he can't get away. No way. Free firing, but the damage just isn't there for him. Levi in some danger of his own as now he retreats back into the fountain. Cody's son pops the GA. Ah, <laughs> oh, no way, no way out of that one as the next is exposed. And Immortals will take the win over Gigabyte Marine. Very clean final fight from Immortals. They will be able to shut down the Gigabyte Marines. And they will be able to get themselves the extra win to finish 2-1 at the end of week one of groups. Yeah, when all things are said and done, Immortals should be very happy with their performance in this group. They pulled one out against Fnatic. They had their first game against Longju, their most formidable opponent in this group. Played them close for 20 minutes and then fell behind. But this game, even after falling down to the first blood, were very steady in their victory. The only steady part, or the only unsteady part, I should say, what you brought up, they just gotta make sure they're minimizing those problems later on, yeah. right? There are a couple positioning issues, but overall the team can look at this as a success. They can go into their prep for week two saying, look, we had some awesome games against Fnatic and against the Gigabyte Marines. And for a lot of these guys, this is their first time on the world stage. Paul Belton and Smithy obviously had to make the trip to Worlds when they were on CLG, so they are much more experienced, but it's the first week on a new stage with so much on the line. It is hard to adjust to, so that's a good start, 2-1.
two and one for the Immortals squad, the team that, like I said earlier, seventh place, North American LCS spring split. Yeah. They end up going to Boston for the North American LCS summer finals. Now they're here competing at Worlds to see if they can prove themselves one of the best teams out there. But I do think that uh, North American fans can be pretty happy because now you have three teams all finishing at two and one. That's a great way to start off week one of group stage and it sets you up nicely moving into week two. Plus, since you're not three and zero, you're not overconfident. That, that means yeah, you're gonna yeah. have plenty. <laughs> That's the word. The yeah, weeks. it was great that they lost. Perfect. Yeah. Yep, exactly what we were looking for. But for more on the Immortals win, let's get some thoughts from Dash and the analysts. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. I love it. All the NA teams with the ideal scoreline of two and one, not too overconfident moving into week two. But Immortals will be happy to pick up the victory here over the Gigabyte Marines. Jat said he wasn't quite ready to throw some flame at the. Heal Ignite Lulu. As it, as, okay, there it is. Let's hear it. <laughs> so here's the thing to me. I have no problem with them trying to play it differently, trying to play it aggressive in lane, right? But what I have a problem with is you're playing alongside a Kog'Maw, not a strong laning champion. You're playing into a Zyra Khan, very, very strong, strong laning. laning duo. You're also playing against a Gragas and a Shen, right? How are you going to utilize these summoners to really get a lane advantage? If this was like a Draven or something, and I'm like, okay, I, I could get behind this, right? This starts to make some sense. Someone who's very lane dominant, someone who can utilize these these summoner spells in and all in to try to snowball the lane and try to take over. And then it makes sense to me. But where was the opportunity for him to actually utilize these summoner spells? I didn't really see one. And it just seemed to me that it was a, an obvious liability. I mean, Smithy didn't even try to focus the AD carry because he knows Lulu has no flash and is a free kill. Yeah, it was just the repeat bot ganks over and over. And that's the easiest call from Immortals, like you said, because Lulu doesn't have the uh, the flash. And then once even post lane phase, she's still not using the heal and the ignite. The team fights are going just as poorly. Now, perhaps the most aggressive pick on the side of Gigabyte Marines was the Kane jungle actually picked up here. First appearance in the world's group stage. Okay, so I want to talk about a, a little bit of theory. So Levi uh, from Vietnam in the LPL, we have a very similar jungler. He actually went through the exact same coach with the Gigabyte Marines. His name is SOFM, Style of Me and they are pretty much exactly the same, trained from the ground up by the same guy. And the idea is, is that the coach comes from a background of Dota, and in Dota, you can deny. In League of Legends, we don't have this mechanic except for the jungle camps. And so you'll see in Levi and SOFM, they are very heavy uh, counter jungling, farming junglers. So Kane as a concept makes a lot of sense. So much mobility, so much ability to farm, so much ability to get into the face and heavy skirmish. So I like the idea of Kane for Levi. Where does it fall Makes short, though? Makes sense, though, but why would you not just take Ezreal right now that has a much better place in the meta? You scale better, you are much stronger at getting out of situations and finding people off 1v1. That's the kind of champion that Ezreal is, whereas Kane is more bullying people out of the jungle and just getting advantages that way. It does allow you, though, that you can transition once you get your evolved form, red form, and then you can have, you know, the CC, the bruiser, the tanky element, whereas Ezreal's not going to have that. So there are pros and cons, but I do agree with you. I think Ezreal's 21 a... 21-minute transformation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. He's a bit more in vogue. <laughs> All right, but let's go ahead and start rolling through some parts of the game. Of course, Gigabyte Marines was able to pick up a first blood off of kind of a crazy level one, but as you mentioned, Zale. No flash on the Lulu means an easy target for many of these ganks. Yeah, and there's there's not even a hesitation there, right? They both go for the Lulu. They don't. It doesn't cost the Gragas a flash. You can repeat down, fully committing again to the Lulu. Now bringing Flame down. They can give this kill over to Cody Sun, who ended up being such a pivotal part of the Immortals game. And Immortals has actually been putting a lot of attention in Cody's son. We saw in their game against Longzhu, it's about making sure that he gets ahead. And before, we were worried about how is Cody's son going to perform? And I think that they're just taking the meta into their own hands and recognizing that we're going to have to put this rookie on the world stage, have him shine through. And he's, he's coming up in a big way. Sure, the game was a little bit at first of them dragging themselves to the Gigabyte Marines pace, going for that first blood <laughs> invade. Why would you invade the Marines? We don't know. But they showed up in the end with a couple of positional errors, as Jao was mentioning, but it was solid overall. It's kind of a similar international story to Han Sama. You know, you have these yes. two very rookie ADCs. No one really has big expectations. You're competing alongside names like Uzi, like Doublelift, and they just kind of get uh, forgotten or fall into the wayside in an ardent sensor meta, but they're stepping up big. Now we push ourselves forward a little bit in the game to kind of the team fight phase of it all, and once again, the lack of flash on the Lulu will come to bite Gigabyte Watch Marines. Watch the Rise ultimate here. So she ports and <laughs> <laughs> right away. That's 
That's a bummer. That's, that's, that's a bummer. unlucky. You're stunned. You can't get out of here. No! The sacrificial lamb out of Optimus. <laughs> Yeah, but here it is. Basically, Take this me. is the fight. Yeah, this is the fight that spelled the end for Gigabyte Marines in a sense, in terms of giving Immortals an insurmountable uh, gold lead over the Gigabyte Marines. And it's just unfortunate that everything kind of seems to collapse right there. But good job from Immortals. You know, they they pretty much had control of this game from start to finish, save for that first blood. That was a little bit wonky when you go full Gigabyte Marines and they beat you at their own game. Um, but other than that, that gold graph says it all. This was Immortals, clean and clean and clear. We do have to give a little bit of credit, at least over to, to Levi, though. I think he played very, very well throughout the game. I think he did put on pressure uh, to Smithy, and he was able to get a level advantage. He was you know, up a lot of farm. He did have gold. So it, it worked to a point, and, and I think had the bot lane not been so far behind, maybe they actually could have taken advantage of it. But that's the one issue. You know, if, you're, if your idea is just to play around the top side of the map, just to heavy farm and contest all of those camps, you know, play that counter jungling style. Got to play a safe bot lane. Yeah, you but, cannot afford heal ignite. But I have it. to say, though, the Gigabyte Marines have been coming up as, oh, we're going to try all these new stuff. We're re-innovating everything. But you went with standard in pretty much all across the board except for the cane. And where is that initial spark? that we saw have they run out of steam because the idea of oh, all about experience and lane subs and everything mm -hmm. has just fallen flat only time will tell right they have a few more days to retool before heading into week two a just real quick hit on immortals as they close out their first round robin they've kind of had an interesting run here through the first week right a very close game almost dropping it to fanatic but getting it just at the end with an overreach by reckless a solid game here what's our assessment of this na squad I actually really like Immortals right now. I think that they've showed a diversified style. They're strong in the early, they're strong in the mid, they can team fight. It's just kind of, again, fine tuning some of those positional errors. You know, in Longju was X Smithy out of position. Here it was a couple of times maybe Cody Sun's overstepping. I think, I, I think they played very well, and I think that Gigabyte did them a big favor by actually taking a game off Fnatic, who was kind of supposed to be their major competition for second place. I agreed. Uh, that's a very good point. We're going to take a short break. When we return, Longju look to take their third win as they go up against Fnatic. Don't touch that browser. Now they see Ole. Here we go. Ole doesn't find the stock up. Instead, he's going to be killed. First blood. Gigabyte Marines. Rulo no flash. Rulo no flash. Rulo no flash. Rulo. Can we keep going? Can I get the kill? Thank you. Oh, they're tipping. They're tipping. They're tipping. They're tipping. Hey, ulti, 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 Yep. Gigabyte Marines want to take this Ocean Drake down for themselves. Nice pick on the Poe Belter. They grab themselves the Drake as well. Nice. Able to find the root, but not going to be finding much else. Cody Sun with the damage. The taunt is locking Archie up, and he can't get away. And Immortals will take the win over Gigabyte Marine. If you want to follow the best of the Rift, then you need T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. We've doubled our coverage, so you can stream worlds in more places than ever before. With T-Mobile, don't miss a moment from the first battle, all the way to the lifting of the Summoner's Cup. Another reason why T-Mobile is America's best unlimited network.